for so many years when Magic Leap did not have a presence here to be here. Well, everything's lined up and ready to go. We have a big booth here. We're showing off a number of demos focused on the enterprise space. Also, AMD invited us to be in their keynote yesterday. And we had the opportunity to talk about our partnership, which um, built sort of the, the processing power that allows us to show the augmented reality images as best possible. And so what's really interesting about Magic Leap is for many years it was super secretive and then you came in and really honed its focus on the enterprise space. Talk to us about that focus and also about the new hardware that you introduced this past fall. Right, so the enterprise space for me was the first entry point that made sense for augmented reality because there's actual use cases today that customers can find value with. And we narrowed it to areas like healthcare, public sector, manufacturing facilities, training. Eventually that will broaden more and eventually we'll circle back to consumer. But that made the most sense, and those are the type of demos and things we're showing in our booth today. So, and talk to us about what some of the key use cases are. I think a lot of people here have heard a lot of talk about yeah. augmented reality, virtual reality, but are still not entirely sure what the enterprise use cases are. Right, and there's certainly a lot of hype around this area of metaverse and, and augmented reality and virtual reality, but the use cases that are viable today, for instance, are in healthcare. Those are the, some of the most exciting ones because I think it's going to change how healthcare is delivered and the outcomes. So we're highlighting one of our partners here today, Senti R. They do catheterization of the heart. And previously, the physician would look down at a 2D screen and be doing the catheterization. Now, with Magic Leap, they can see the live image of the heart in front of their eyes and the outcomes are safer, more accurate navigation. So that's the sort of thing that can completely change it. Additionally, we've just been certified with 60601 compliance to go into the operating room. So the surgeons can actually wear this during surgery. You can actually put digital content on top of the patient who's in surgery to help guide this physician in that situation as well. It's amazing to think about having these AR headsets in uh, in operating rooms, but tell us about some of the sort of broader use cases. I know that you know Cisco is one of the companies that you're partnering with and is doing a demo. In this new hybrid workplace, as companies start to bring employees back into the office, what do you think the use case is for some of these technologies that may have made more sense in an entirely remote workforce? Correct. So. Cisco is highlighting their WebEx hologram version. And essentially, it's you can think of it as 3D meetings. So they can take an image of uh, someone who's in a meeting, and through the use of the Magic Leap device, I can see that image of you. You may be in New York, I'm on the West Coast, and it's as if we're in the same room together. Uh, so that's the direction it's going. And then what about NVIDIA with their, with their sort of virtual alternative worlds. Right, so NVIDIA is building something called the Omniverse. They are also a close partner of ours, which means with our display, we can tap into the back end that they've built, which we can, uh, for instance, use their AI capabilities and tools to really bring more value to the ecosystem that sits on top of the Magic Leap device. So with all of this innovation, I have to ask about two potential challenges, one of which is that the virtual hologram meetings might have made a lot more sense when everyone was working remotely or more people are working remotely, but now as more people are coming into the office, does this make your technology and the investment in these devices less plausible or, or less urgent? Not at all. I think we will continue to have kind of a, a hybrid environment. There'll be times when we're all together in the office and other times when you can work from wherever you at. Think of this as a tool that will help add additional capability. Perhaps it'll allow us not to jump on planes so much for an hour long meeting on the other coast. That's the sort of gap that it can fill with this type of technology. The other big challenge is, of course, the economy. We've seen a decline in overall consumer spending. We just saw all of these big announcements about tech firms doing major layoffs. Amazon just announced some major layoffs. And there is this question of how much both enterprise and consumer spending is going to continue to decline given the pressures of the economy and inflation. In light of all of that, doesn't that make investments um, in, your, in your technology something that's a nice to have and not a need to have? 
Actually, I think it makes even more sense now. So for instance, in the training area, we have companies, there's one in the Midwest PDC Linear, they are able to save about 80% on their training costs by using this device. So companies that are looking for efficiencies, cost savings, can turn to Magic Leap to help them reduce those sorts of costs that aren't going to go away in, in a But are you seeing economy. them do that? Um, we saw an overall decline in VR, AR headset sales globally last year. So if, if 2022, which was a year when we were expecting to see growth in AR, VR, if last year we saw a decline in AR and VR headset sales, are you concerned that that decline is going to continue? And what are you actually tangibly seeing in terms of these companies making commitments to Magic Leap? So what I am seeing is a growing and a healthy ecosystem of applications that sit on top of the Magic Leap device and they bring value today to customers. So we are the most immersive augmented reality platform out there. And, and that's what it's going to be about. Can we deliver ROI to our customers? If we can, they will choose us, even in a struggling economy. And are you seeing them choose you? Are you seeing them already make those, those investments, or are you seeing a wait and see? We're seeing that, for instance, with PDC Linear, who is now converting their in-classroom training program to one that is using augmented reality as the basis for bringing on new factory workers um, who they have a challenge in that area as well, and this gets them up to speed more quickly out on the factory floor and productive from day one. Let's talk a little bit about competition. Your old yeah. employer, Microsoft, you are a, we're a veteran of Microsoft, worked there for many years as a senior executive. They are the, the leader in the enterprise VR, AR space. Um, talk to us about your competition with them and how you're really thinking about differentiating from where Microsoft is investing. So Microsoft, first of all, we welcome competition because I think it's a sign of a healthy and growing ecosystem in the augmented reality space. And they certainly were and are a leader with their enterprise capabilities. But for instance, we're working with them to integrate some of their software onto Magic Leap 2, such as Microsoft Teams. So that, it, we have actually a good partnership because they're ahead in the enterprise space from a software perspective, and this is a great device that can help highlight the capabilities of their software. So who do you see as your main competition? You know, right now we are a bit in a category of our own because we have immersive technology that nobody else has. We took a different path on the technology space. We have the largest field of view, we have incredible image quality, text legibility, all of those things put us as a leader in the augmented re reality space. So for things like using inside an operating room, for high precision training of a factory worker on a, a, a machine they're trying to maintain, you're going to choose a Magic Leap 2 device. Apple is widely expected to launch its first AR, VR headset this year. It could be as soon as this spring. There's a lot of speculation that this could really be a game changer for the metaverse or whatever this broader ecosystem we're talking about uh, in terms of the combination of AR and VR. Could this be a real rival to what you're doing? Because Apple devices are widely accepted even by enterprises, not just a consumer, a consumer business. Well, certainly we're watching that closely as well, but I do think of it as a sign of a healthy, growing industry. So we're excited about additional competition coming in. They have been traditionally focused in the consumer area and we're focused on highly immersive augmented reality. And we're looking, you know, you know as much as I do from the press reports, but I, it, it seems that we have different technologies. You know, we are full augmented reality. You actually see your physical world in front of you. There's not a camera that's presenting your physical world, you actually see it and we put the digital content into the picture. Mm -hmm. And that means there's a lot of use cases that can only use that type of technology that Magic Leap is building. And so that's those are the markets that we're most focused on. Where does Meta fit into this? Because as part of Mark Zuckerberg's reimagining of what Facebook was as Meta, big piece of this is appealing to the enterprise to use their technology. Horizon World is the way people can interact at work. And even when you do demos of it, they make workplace capabilities a big part of that. I just did a demo and they showed me how I could be using um, their, their Quest headset as an architect. So how do you see them as a rising rival in this space? Well, it's interesting. They just made a big pivot themselves with Oculus Quest Pro to point at enterprise because it truly is the right entry point. These devices have to um, you know, deliver value today and I think that's, that's what they saw. So we'll see 
um, the direction that they'll go with that. They also use a different technology, quite a bit different from us. Um, and the reason is because augmented reality is very, very hard to do. The optics are very difficult, but we've been in this game for over a decade. We've uh, been down a lot of areas and tested out things, and what we've built today is the most immersive technology in the space. It'll be, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of Met as they continue to go down that path. But just a couple of questions before we wrap up sure. about your business. Um, there have been a number of reports saying that in December, Saudi Arabia took a controlling stake in the company before it had been a minority mistake, a minority stake. What does this, um, this move, this fact that you now have a majority stakeholder mean for your business? Well, you know, we don't comment specifically on our investors, but I can say that they have been, they were an existing investor when I stepped in as CEO two years ago, and they continue to be a very supportive investor, and they believe in the technology and the impact it's going to have on a number of areas in enterprise and eventually consumer. The, the Wall Street Journal report said that as a result of this majority stake, the Saudis can now appoint eight board seats. Are you at all concerned about any entity, let alone the Saudi government, having such a large say in the future of Magic Leap? Well, first of all, we don't comment specifically on board matters, but I can say we have a very supportive, a very active board, and they've given us great guidance as we launch into this new area. This, you know, it's going to be the next paradigm in computing, and we appreciate all of our investors' support. But should, um, should people expect any sort of change in direction, especially with these eight new board members? Um, again, I can't. Uh, confirm any of that information. What I can say is there's no change in direction. We're focused on our strategy. We'll stay enterprise for the time yeah. being and on those fields that we've talked about. And I know you can't comment on who your, who your investors are, but any thoughts on sort of the fundraising environment now? If indeed you did take that additional investment from the Saudis, does that say anything about the state of the landscape? Maybe they're among the few who are put writing big checks right now. Well, it's interesting. I think the last time we spoke, I talked about the growing interest in the industry, mm -hmm. in our technology, in our IP, in our manufacturing processes. And since then, we have now um, uh, we now have two strategic partnerships in that space with very large companies in the tech space who are trying to accelerate their augmented reality roadmap. Um, so they'll be able to leverage what we've learned over our mm -hmm. over decades worth of experience and our manufacturing process. We have a very high yield rate out of our manufacturing process. We, we uh, have a building right in South Florida where we manufacture. And now with these strategic partnerships in place, mm -hmm. um, that will just strengthen the company. It's a new area of business for us. And just a final question, what is the future of Magic Leap? Is this a company that you expect to sell or to take public with an IPO? What do you expect? Right now, we're just heads down, focus on um, making Magic Leap 2 successful, growing the ecosystem of solutions that reside on Magic Leap 2, and then eventually over time, circling back at some point to consumer. Circling back to consumer. Well, we're so grateful to have you talk to us with Magic Leap's first time here, having a presence on the show floor at CES. Peggy Johnson, the CEO of Magic Leap, thanks for so much for talking to us today. Thanks, Julia. Thanks for having me. I'm